guess you can say this is drastic. Now bear in mind we're in a kitchen which has been decorated, so there's pipe works here. And that's the top of this device, which is a push bike head stock. And that is a drill press vice, and I've stoned the bottom of that off. I've got two dowels in it, which are resting against this engineered surface here. Although I might change that position and put it against the front, but I wanted it against the back. I might have it against the back yet. Yeah, I think I'll have it against the back. So I'm going to swap this around. But here's a steel ruler which is going to be held in place with a magnet. And here is a brass and aluminium plumb bob which I made. So it's not magnetic. So it's a very crude but extremely accurate level. I will measure the distance between the two objects and we'll measure the resolution of it. But it has got a very high resolution, this type of plumb bob. And I'm leveling the lathe. I am getting sick and tired of turning a taper, so I am seeing if it is in the same plane all the way down. So here I am set up. I've spun the vice around the other way. I've set the pins up so the balance point is equal. So every time I put the vice on, it's in a balancing point. It's got the same amount of force going one way as it has got the other way. I've got the line pinched here. It wraps up around the tube, around the head a few times, and then around the headstock a few times. And then it comes back down the plumb bob and the plumb bob is spaced with a, a Rene tablet anti-indigestion tablet and a nut held on top of that and a magnet held in, holding it on the other side I might have to adjust it a bit more after it is finished rotating you might be able to see it rotating still I will put a marker on it to make sure every time I take a reading it's in the same position because it looks like it's around about a three millimeter circle it's going around. Right, so we're back at the lathe and the plumb bob level. And about an hour ago I came down, it had stopped moving just about, I think. And I've put that Sharpie mark on it. And that Sharpie mark, if you can see the cable, it's a bit right. You can see the thread. I'd lined the thread up with the post and put a Sharpie mark on it. Now I'll let it run again. And it's not in line. But it's still swinging slightly. I'm going to leave it for another hour or so. And I'm hoping that's just going to come back and settle in line again. You will have to excuse the racket in the background. But I am here levelling the lathe. I've just moved it from approximately here to here. So as you can see... The plumb bob is moving at the moment. It's also spinning. And it will spin for hours until it settles. Uh, I've got three marks on there at the moment. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get them in there. That's the mark I'm waiting for it to come around. There's, there's another mark around there. There's three marks there. But that big mark just there will eventually sit it's moving now. It got to its apogee and now it's moving back. Okay. So I'm waiting for the spin to stop and for the rocking motion to stop. And here's the readings I got. 2 inch 7.30 seconds, 
7.30 seconds and now right here right where the paper is I've got 6.30 seconds and this one right now can't tell I thought I was going to be around about 5.30 seconds here but when it stops rocking it stops rocking so I took the covers off and there's the covers underneath there at the end of the cover and they usually cover this area up here to try and stop a lot of the oil going into this dam here and I've got a hole drilled in it and I do catch the oil going into that dam and that's about a month's worth so I've, I've slowed the amount down but I can fit feeder gauges in there quite a few near enough the whole stack <laughs> of one set so uh, oh my magnets come off anyhow whatever magnets come off that's what's holding up that um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shim it up because clearly you can't see I'm trying to press down on it but when I pull down tight with these bolts here on the side it obviously pulls it down and I think that's flexing it here somewhere it's, it's, it's a long bed so you know I think it's putting some bend in it. So I'm going to shim up underneath here with something and level it. The only problem is now my, my plumb bob it will be even further off now. <laughs> you never know, it might be alright. It's, it's just not, is it? It's going to be off the scale now, but not to worry. So just for quickness, I rammed two pieces of cardboard in the back here and just nipped just nipped it down. Now I really wish I'd have put some brass in or something. Because I've just measured the ways and this is the last one, I haven't put the reading down on that one yet. We've got one eighth and a nuts cock, one eighth and a nuts fanny, one eighth and, well, not a lot extra, and one eighth and a nuts cock. So it's more or less parallel all the way down now, or level, shall I say. So now I just want to rebuild it and use it, <laughs> but it's got cardboard stuffed in it. The thing you do, eh? Uh, I think that's I'm going to leave it and see if it vibrates. It's possibly going to vibrate with two cardboard pads underneath it, but I'm hoping that will be better. I'm going to recheck it one more time. And when I say it's an eighth and a gnat, I've, I've moved it now, so it's going to be rocking. But So it's just slightly over an eighth, you see that? Yeah, it's not eighth and a half. Or should I say four sixteenths, whatever it is, and a half. Four thirty seconds and a half. So it's not quite a sixty-fourth, it's half over it. So it's hundred and twenty-eighth or something like that, it's at. I'm not very good with this inch stuff, I'm just guessing at these fractions. I think it is 64th and 128th I'm talking about. But because I'm walking past it, and any kind of breeze, any kind of breeze at all makes this start rocking again. But this line, since I've got it settled, I have moved this up and down the bed four times now, and every time it stops, if I look straight down there, but just bring it to that it looks lines up perfectly every single time and that's when I take the measurement because although I've turned this the string coming out the top is too thin for the hole that I drilled so it does sit on the piss a little bit so it does matter which orientation this is in and that thick black line whatever it is there that lines up every time and I know it's the same one because I've got two lines down here and 
they give me the orientation. I know it's this thick, this thick one here, and these two are on this side, and that, that's been doing it every time. So this string that I'm using, this cord, has stretched to its stretchiness now and isn't stretching anymore, and is giving me stable readings, which is great. Now I've cleaned the lathe. It is level to within a reasonable amount. I don't know exactly how level it is. <laughs> I haven't worked it out. We had a radius of 1.2 meters, so that's 2.4 meter diameter. That times 3.42, 3.142 is about six meters ish. Six meters is six thousand millimeters. Three hundred and sixty into six thousand is I'll do an approximation. Can't be doing this. So I'll go six thousand divided by three sixty equals sixty millimeters would have been one degree. Okay, so, oh good grief, 6,000 divided by 360 equals, that divided by 60 equals 0 0.2 millimetres, 0 0.3 millimetres, would have been one second, and I'm dealing with a Nats Fanny. Which is around about, you know, it's it's a small amount. Um, I couldn't really measure it because it was less than half a millimetre, and well, we we are within one arc second all the way across. I think that's pretty close, to be fair. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's. Uh, that's as far as I've worked it out. So that's pretty level. So what I want to do now, I don't understand why it's so stiff now. What it is. It's not that bad. It's probably got too much weight on it. So I want to do a test cut. So I'm going to put the three jaw chuck on it. Put some random metal in there and see if leveling the bed out has made it cut less of a taper. So I'm going to pick some soft, mild steel, something that isn't going to tax the lathe too much, and chuck it up and see what happens. So I'll bring you back round. So my first plan of action was I'll put the three jaw in and I'll get this shock absorber shaft, which should be pretty well ground parallel. But unfortunately, there's just, I don't know if you can see that, there's just a little bit of run out. It's just a three jaw, obviously. I mean, it's sticking out here about 12 inches. And at the end there, there's a bit of run out. The plan was I was going to run an indicator down the side of it and see how, how well it's cut in. So how well it's sitting, but that just isn't going to happen, is it? I think this chuck needs balancing, do you think? Yep. So that plans out the window, because the three-jaw chuck, bless its heart, can't chuck things perfectly. So back to plan A. So I find, found an old tire iron, you might call it, or, you know, wheel brace. I've got it in back gear, and instead of doing me stupid, we'll pot off for seven hours and hit the compound and what have you, just going to hacksaw it. As soon as it's minus five outside, 
and what's going out to the voice. Just going to do it in the yours. Safety glasses on. Piece of wood here to stop me from getting hardened steel filings all over the freshly clean lathe. And this is way hard. This is hard as hardness. Let me just put a bit more protection over the ways before I do this. Put a lot more protection over the ways before I do this because I'll just clean them. To clean this. So, well, oh, take a lot. We'll have that there. And then we'll have this as well just to get up close so and catch even more. Of the dust in that. Right. Phone ringing. Whoa! Pause. There we go. Bit of really hard steel. I'm I'm guessing it's chrome vanadium. We've got a tall steel, isn't it? Not saying it is. I'm just guessing it is. So I'll need some carbide to cut that with. For sure. Not a left hand tool. Not a right hand tool. Maybe I ought to clean that up a little bit now. You never know. You know it's a bit, uh, a bit manky now, isn't it? Hmm, interesting. So again, inside the house, no airline. I was contemplating making a temporary kind of airline thing. I still might do it. Nice little quiet. Foot pump or stirrup pump. Oh, clean the end of that up. Seems I'll just clean the quick change tool post as well. Oh, so I didn't tighten it very well, did I? Oop. Think much of this uh, it just doesn't feel that's better, it feels a lot better now. I don't feel bad. I think I'll put too much way oil underneath it. Let's get some on the teeth as well. See if that makes any different any difference. Try not to clout the carbide against the chuck and break it. Get the battery charger out of the way. And get the VFD running. Let's see what we get.
Now, usually over such a long cut, it would be about a ninth hour table. So, hoping it's not got a ninth hour table. Something different to ninth hour will be good. I'm sure this will be quite nice metal. It's quite hot as well after doing all that. So, that's for forty eight, four forty eight. Four thirty seven. Oh, 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 oh. Four and four twenty. Four thirty. Four thirty two. Four thirty five. Four thirty eight. Four thirty nine. And obviously this bit that started where it deflects quite a bad quite badly I think Let's go from here and we're looking at 437 go ahead and put center in this obviously 437 430 Three, four, thirty-one. So it's still cutting a taper. I know it's only a small piece of metal, and I haven't got a centre in it, but it's still cutting a massive taper. I'm gonna take a few spring cuts, eh? We'll see what happens. See if it will come back in. Let's give it a few spring cuts. some of this proper bad swarf and yeah you can feel the hardness in the metal on the swarf it's like proper hard stuff speed you 
didn't like the speed at all. Bit of cutting oil. And a one foul cut. That last cut was too foul because it wasn't doing anything. Just zeroing it back out again. I've got oil everywhere. <laughs> this is a proper rough surface now with these light cuts. That's what you get with light cuts and hardened steel with carbide. I might put some high speed steel in just to get a nice cut on it. I think we can average out the roughness. Right, so that's lots of spring cuts. And we got 429. Four twenty seven, four twenty six, four twenty six. Four twenty six, less than four twenty six. Something's gone wrong. <laughs> All right, we'll use the. I might have to get another set of um, these. Don't. This when I first got these more and right, they were seized up, and I opted just to use them and see if they freed up. And they freed up to a certain extent, but there's certain places where the thumb wheel just won't get past its own resistance. So I'm just going to get another set of micrometers out. Right, I'll swap to metric. See how these looking, and they zero out. Ten point nine one. Ten point nine one. Ten point.
eight four no talking balls I think no I'm not there we go yeah no I was right yeah 10.83 Ten point eight three. Ten point eight three. Ten point. Ten point nine something at the end here. So now four in. Ten point eight five. Ten point eight four. Ten point eight three. Oh, don't do that. Ten point eight two point five. But I didn't knock it on the way out, so that could be ten point eight three. So I think I'm within point two apart from this last. Section about there. Alright, so I'm in point one from about here to here. It's parallel this last short section. Uh, sorry, point one from about here. Was it right here? Stop tapping it, stupid man. Did nothing one. Ten point three five. Sorry, ten point eight five, ten point eight three. So from about here to here, it's parallel. There's obviously, some places where there's oil and a chip on it. So the, I think I've got it bang on now. Just got to take lots and lots and lots of final cuts. So what I've got to look for is getting probably three thousand. Obviously, I'm measuring metric now. That makes no difference to get within about 3,000 of my target size and then just do loads of spring passes and then clean the crap off because well obviously I'm putting too much tool pressure on <laughs> way too much tool pressure for the thin metals that I'm cutting <laughs> 